back in the 90s when you guys um, started working with uh, Public Enemy, what kind of spawned that? Was that something that you guys were into, mostly in the hip-hop sort of scene at the time? Um, yeah, from way back when, um, even before the Public Enemy thing, we did a thing in 80, 85, 86 called I'm the Man, which right. is a kind of a rap song. And the original idea for that was uh, the Beastie Boys were going to be on that with us. Right. Um, and then um, scheduling conflicts, it just couldn't happen. Plus, once their record license to OK now, they were just nonstop. So, um, so that's how that happened. And then um, we ended up doing it ourselves, and we were happy with the way it came out. And we always loved the, the song uh, Bring the Noise. I mean, we love not all of us in the band really embraced rap, but some of us did. Yeah. Me, me, of course, I was one of them that did. Uh, it just, it was just the uh, the right thing at the right time for me, at least, right. to uh, this thing just appeal to me. So, um, yeah, and Chucky would, um, in the song, Bring the Noise, he name-checked us, and I thought that was really cool. Right on. And um, we wanted to do a cover of it, and uh, that's what we did. Okay. Um, with the next question, uh, you, you, I guess... From what I understand, that you know, obviously a lot of people, not just yourself, but you say a lot of metalheads are kind of closed-minded when it comes to their, I guess, taste in music. Um, what do you think it would take to get a lot of metalheads to sort of open up their minds to, you know, get into other styles of music? Um, I don't think the traditional type of metalheads really like that type of music. Yeah. Uh, I just don't think it really says anything to them. Right. Uh, I mean, I kind of consider myself a traditional metalhead, but I think I was brought up a different way. So um, I was always into uh, different things. Okay. Uh, when it comes to, um, you know, what you guys did with uh, your recent clinics, uh, especially for kids, um, is, that, is that something that you, you're doing for um, typically – uh, like approaching it like the same sort of thing that Nam would do, where they believe that you know kids should be interested in music. Oh no, that wasn't my. Uh, actually, the whole concept behind going to school was to actually hear what they had to say and demonstrate, you know, some things for the music for the music class. Okay, that's it. Basically, that and then I discovered that a lot of the kids who were playing this game, uh, Guitar Hero, were actually taking it a step further and wanting to find out where these songs came from. Okay. Um, which was a really great thing for me to hear. Other, you know, other than we just play the game, now they're just trying to figure out where, who's the Rolling Stones, you know, who's this, who's that. So yeah. I thought that was really encouraging. And, um, you know, that's, probably something that happened as an accident. I don't know if the Guitar Hero people really had that plan, you know what I mean? Maybe it was thought of, but, you know, it's it, it's a pretty good thing, I think. Okay. Uh, now, with currently where you guys stand with your new album coming up, uh, what sort of things has uh, Dan brought to the table as compared to previous um, vocalists? Any, anything really distinctive that uh, a lot of Anthrax, uh, I can't even speak to it, Anthrax fa fans should know about? In your, in your... I think, that he, um, I think uh, when, I, when I look at Dan and when I hear Dan, I think what, what he brings to the table is uh, a bit more power uh, than the other guys had. Um, and I, I don't mean that in like a, in a derogatory way. Everybody has their own style of singing or playing or whatever. He just brings a little more power to the, uh, to the mix, and it really shows. Okay. When do you see really, really, really good, good singer? And where, where do you see yourselves uh, releasing that new album? Uh, like, what stage are you at right now? Um, right now, we have about five, six songs that are almost complete. I mean, when I say almost complete, I mean that there's music and words behind it, and uh, so we just have to continue to you know, keep moving on. Right. Um, with every album that we've ever done, whenever it gets to the five, six point song, you know, mark, that's when I, talk, I take a look at the record and see where it's going. 
Right. And you know, see how it's shaping up. Because you could have, you know, song here, song there, and it, you really have no idea of, of, of what the concept is. Okay. Now, but you guys don't, like, historically go in with, like, 50 type of t- tunes, and then you start, like, basically, you know, prioritizing which, which are the better tracks to, to, to move with on, on terms of the album. I mean, it sounds like you guys more record song by song. We pretty much know going in what songs are going to be on the record, okay. and then we also do a few other songs um, at the side. Okay. Or soundtracks, you know, something like that. Okay, well, I'll, I'll make this the last question. Um, in terms of uh, your new coffee blend that you, guys, that you brought out, are, are, obviously you must be a, a fan of um, coffee as an addict, I guess. Is that a safe thing to say? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm a huge, huge coffee fan. Um been that way since I was a little kid, and uh, once the idea, or once it was presented to me that this could be uh, a reality, um, yeah, I jumped on it. I was just like, dude, this is one of the greatest things that I could ever hope for, you know what I mean? It's like, so Dave Mustaine did it, and um, he asked me to do it because they know my love of coffee, and then uh, we worked on the first coffee that come out was... Uh, it's like a dark roast type of, uh, uh, actually it's a French roast, but I made it darker, okay. uh, just to have a little bit more of a kick to it. And it, and it kicks ass. I mean, it, it's great. It's just a good cup of coffee. If you like coffee, you'll probably appreciate this. Okay. The next one that I do is going to be, uh, uh, a real darker, stronger really one. Really? Um, and how, how many cups of coffee do you typically drink a day? <laughs> That's a good question. Um, it depends. You know, depends on what you would call a cup of coffee. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, we, up here, I'm being from Canada, we have Tim Hortons, and uh, it, it, it's kind of... Tim yeah, Hortons, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, like I'm up to about four or five of those a day, and, and actually I went to hospital because I thought uh, I was getting a heart attack, but it ended up being like some kind of caffeine attack. Yeah, dude, you got to watch out for that. Yeah. Um, but um, well, you have Starbucks up there, too. Yeah, yeah. And I tell you the truth, the other the other coffee that I, I I've always liked too is has always been McDonald's coffee. Yeah. Um, really. They they have a really good coffee there, and I've always said that. So it's good. I'm not one for Dunkin' Donuts, though. I don't I like gonna, that. I was I was going to ask you because like Dunkin' Donuts would be kind of like our Tim Hortons, you know, truck stuff coffee kind of deal. But it's like coffee flavored tea. That's what I call it. Yeah, pretty well. Yeah. yeah. But but are you a fan, an actual fan of Starbucks? Oh yes. Yeah, and then you you go. It sounds like you go more for the bowl or the extra bowl kind of flavor. I love the the this the, my favorite Starbucks blend is this one called Komodo Dragon, and it's really black and it's really? it's real strong. Wow. Um, yeah, I love it. Okay, hang on a second. No worries, no worries.